Hey everybody, welcome to Spark TV. My name is Sebastian Alpat. Today's lesson is one of the oldest art lessons in the book. I'm going to teach you about charcoals. Now charcoals, probably the first tool, maybe the first tool ever by an artist to start their creative journeys, right? Most painters use charcoal to lay down the groundwork on paintings. Today, I'm going to show you how charcoal can be such a powerful tool, foundational tool, to learn drawing, shadows, midtones, highlights. So come with me today, and we're gonna take a journey into charcoals. For this lesson, I'm actually gonna be using a tone gray paper because it actually really lends itself to some really beautiful kind of shading and tones for charcoals. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through a series of shapes that we're gonna to do together to show you how to create the shadows, the light, and the highlights of basic shapes. So, how do we turn them from two-dimensional into three-dimensional? In order to do this, I'm going to flash the materials that we're gonna need. Um, so charcoal, pencils, it doesn't have to be toned gray paper, it can be also just white paper. And we're gonna start with our best friend, the circle. But we're gonna turn our circle into a sphere. So what I'm gonna have you do is first just draw in the upper left-hand corner of your paper. Just draw a circle, okay? Now I'm gonna just use this ruler and slightly above the bottom of the circle, I'm gonna add a line. And that's gonna be my table where our good friend the circle is sitting. Now, when it comes to deciding where your shadows go, you really want to know where the light is coming from. And this is an important tool for all, our, for all drawing. For the purposes of teaching, I'm going to draw an arrow, and I'm going to put a little sun where my arrow is going to go. So we know our light is coming from this side. Really good rule of thumb for all you artists out there, if the light is coming from this side, where do you think the shadow is going to be? Pretty obvious, right? It's going to be on the opposite side. You've walked around, you've seen your shadows, you know how this goes. So in order to start putting down the shadows, we're going to use a charcoal pencil. Now, my charcoal pencil is a little bit uh, of a, just looks like a black pencil. You can use a stick of charcoal. I've got a bunch of different kinds here. But for this one, for our first circle, what I'm going to do is we are going to add the first part of our shadows, which I'm gonna draw on the inside of the circle as almost a crescent moon. So I've drawn that shadow on the inside of my circle, and I'm gonna also further add a shadow right on the bottom of the table. Because you've seen stuff on tables, there's always a shadow cast from wherever the light is coming from, usually to the opposite side. Now, as I move away from the circle, my shadow is gonna get a little lighter, but right by the edge of the circle on the table, that's where it's the darkest, right? So you should have something that looks like this. Here's my circle, with the shadow on the table, and now I'm gonna introduce you to another one of our great tools for this lesson, which is a blender. A blender, you can get these from any art store. This is just a rolled up piece of paper. Uh, I think in French it's called a papillon. Um, this is great for blending the charcoal dust to make it look more softer, to make it appear softer and to actually render it softer and spread it out. Now you can also use your good friend, the finger. And if you want to use the finger, small little micro circles will start to spread out that charcoal to the rest of your circle. Now, the blender is also useful because sometimes our pudgy fingers can't get into these really delicate shapes. So I will show this to you using the blender. And that concentrated point allows you to spread the charcoal to the edges of your circle and beyond. 
you see how the dust kind of disappears? It softens considerably. And you can go back and forth between the blender. And your finger, you'll get one of these fingers, artist fingers. You can also use the blender on the table to soften that out. And you can watch what I'm doing. I'm basically just pulling that charcoal dust away from where I colored it. And voila, there's the shadows. Now, the shadows of these dark sections right here, as you know, this section right here, it's an equally important part of this lesson. These are called the midtones. The midtones, I call them the grays, you know, like the grays. They're not the darks, they're not the lights, they're the grays. And speaking of the lights, we want to add our highlight, right? Here's our sun. Mr. Sun's right here. So because we know the brightest part of our scene right now is the top of the circle, what I'm actually going to do is draw with an eraser, and I'm going to lift off the shadow that I've created there. And by lifting it off, you will able to render a little, a little highlight there. Now, if it's hard to see, take your blender and go back in. Oh, wow. There's my shadowed sphere. So my flat two-dimensional circle with a little bit of shading, a little bit of blending is now a sphere. So there's our sphere. Now, I'm going to move on to the next shape. So we'll do a few shapes before I do our master lesson, because I think it's a nice way to warm up. And I'm going to do this pretty quickly, but you can follow along with me. I am going to draw our friend the square and turn him in to, that's right, 3D square, which is also known as a cube. And I'm sure you already knew that. So. I've seen a lot of my students show me their tricks to drawing cubes. Mine's pretty simple. Start with that square. Three lines. They're all going to go in unison, the same direction. That's the key. You have to draw all the three lines the same direction. If you don't, your, your cube might look a little wobbly. So try to ensure that all your three lines from the corners are going the same way. Again, I'm going to draw this upside down so you can see it. And just like the circle, let's see if I can keep it. I'm going to just add, you know, I'll add a little bit higher. I'm going to add a line to show where my cube is sitting. So there's my un unshadowed cube. Now, this time again, I'm just going to draw my sunlight. There's my sunlight. I'm going to jump straight into my shadow. My charcoal pencil. Where uh, is my shadow going to go? It's going to go on the opposite side of the light. So I'm going to start by this side, the far side of this cube, and bring in a shadow element right along the bottom. I'm also going to bring that shadow element right on the edge of the cube of the table. And as I color away from the cube, again, I put less pressure on the paper and it gets a little lighter, right? The edges of the cube, that's probably where the darkest shadow is, right? It's usually right at the edge, and it's getting lighter as it goes away. I'm gonna color in that side. There really wouldn't be any highlights on that side. The, the brightest part of this cube is gonna be right on the surface of this surface of the cube right here. So I'm gonna add some mid-tones here. And I always think you're never really gonna see a cube totally bright white. So I add just a little bit of shading to that just to give it some texture and some life. Now I'm going to use my blender, soften this whole thing up. The blender is really fun to use because it really is just like a paper pencil. And so you can use it for really delicate and like I said, smaller areas, but at the same time, you really get some precision with it because you can get so close to those edges. And I'm going to soften the big one right here. Isn't that so cool when you notice how, how much like your pressure and the heat of your hand and your finger can kind of soften that entire shadow up. And right here, 
I'm going to go back in, call that in. And then that trick again that I used to bring in the highlights, I'm just going to take that eraser right on the edge. We can actually use this eraser to create the highlight. And voila, there's our shadowed cube. So now we've got the sphere, we've got the cube. I'm going to jump to my next one, the triangle. The triangle is going to be our flat two-dimensional shape. We're going to render him 3D. What's a three-dimensional triangle? I'll give you a hint. There's giant ones sitting in a desert. Got it? Pyramids. Yes, I heard you say that. So I'm going to create my first triangle. It can be equilateral. It doesn't have to be all three sides equal, but if you can make it, great. If not, not a deal breaker. Just create your first triangle. Now the trick with the triangle turning into a pyramid is just the same thing that I did with the cube. You're going to have one diagonal line. You can extend it about half the width of this triangle, so right about right there. And then from that diagonal line, you're just going to take it up to the top. Easy peasy. There's our triangle. Now I'm going to add that line behind the triangle to create the horizon, where's our triangle sitting or living? Where's our pyramid living right now? And now that our pyramid is created, let's create the light line, the light line or the sun line. There's my sun line. And if the sun is coming from here, same, same as before, the same rule applies. Shadows are usually gonna live on the opposite side, more often than not. And I'm gonna render that entire side of the pyramid with my charcoal pencil. Bring it to the table. Lighter as I go away. A little bit more pressure right on the edge. Sometimes that shadow on the table and the shadow on the side of the pyramid, they might blend. And just like I said before, it kind of looks a little unrealistic if one side is completely not having any shading to it. So I just add a little bit. The brightest part of my triangle, I kind of I kind of always say it's going to be right towards the top because that's where the sunlight is. So again, I'm, I'm shading this very lightly only because I can go back to my blender now and start using that. The bottom of the triangle is kind of close to the bottom of the table, right? So there could be more shadows here. You want to try to keep your coloring a little bit uniform. And if you're going one diagonal, stay in that diagonal as you go to the top. You can mix it up. As you see here, when I'm doing this shadow, I'm going up and down, up and down the same way. Table two, I'm going to, whoops, going to just bring it away. You can use my fingers again. It's kind of fun to use your fingers because again, it just softens the whole thing up quite a bit. And if, say, something like that should happen and you kind of smudge, that's okay. Remember, artist's best friend right here, eraser. Take the eraser to clean up the edges outside the pyramid. And then to add that highlight, I'm going to just go back in. And voila. There's your 3D pyramid. So we've created the three most basic shapes that you really can use. A sphere, a cube, and a pyramid. And with these three shapes, you can literally build anything. Now that we've done these shapes, I'm going to take you on a greater charcoal journey. Now with charcoal and shading and using the eraser, as you've seen, we have these three tools now that we can do something really wild with. So I want to challenge you to go up into the biggest thing that I can think of that is white, hangs in the air and has lots of textures and shadows to it. Anyone? Anyone? All right. I'm bringing you the moon. Okay, we're going to the moon. So here we go. I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. We're going to do it together, but I'm going to show you how to create a moon like this. And you might be like, how am I going to do that? That looks so complicated, but step by step, we'll do it together. So here we go. 
Okay guys, now that we've done those three shapes and you've got the basic concept of shadows, midtones, and highlights, we're gonna jump to a little bit more challenging subject matter. And I said, we're gonna to go to the moon. So we are gonna create our rendering of the moon, looking at it from like some kind of planet way up in space. Maybe it's our moon, maybe it's Jupiter moon, who cares, right? Let's just make this move. So in order to do this first, I am going to create kind of just like the top of a planet on the bottom of my paper, okay? This is just going to be a rounded, doesn't have to be a straight line. It's kind of like the rounded surface of a planet. Maybe this is where we're standing and we're looking at this giant moon, okay? I'm going to do this as best as I can upside down. Okay, I got skills, so I'm not worried. The next part is gonna be adding this giant moon. And as you can see from my hand, I'm tracing it, I'm gonna make it as big as possible to fill the foreground, okay? It's kind of like our sphere, but, right, it's a lot bigger this time, so. Sometimes, uh, some of my students, they try to draw a perfect circle. And I said, it's really hard to draw a perfect circle in just one fell swoop. So this kind of scratch drawing technique that I taught them is just, just draw it lightly and follow it as best as you can from one side to the other. And then as you're done, when you're done, you can kind of adjust and say, okay, I need to extend this side out a little bit. Draw it light until you draw it right. I'm just going to kind of define the edges of my moon by pushing a little harder with my charcoal pencil, and voila, we've got a circle and a bump. But we're gonna take this circle and the bump and we're gonna turn it into something really special. Now, before this actual lesson, I actually have a big stick of charcoal here to render the shadows, the mid-tones, the highlights. Um, it's a little bit less refined than my charcoal pencil, but I thought for this, for this lesson, for this size, it would be easier to show. So, same as before, I'm going to decide where's my light coming from. My sunlight, right? This is in space. I'm going to draw this little big arrow right here and say that that's going to be my sunlight. So right here is going to be the highlight of my moon. This section here is going to be my midtones. And just like the sphere, this section here is going to be my shadow. So my dark side of the moon is going to be right down here. And using pretty fairly gen gentle pressure, I'm going to create a crescent moon in my moon. I know the charcoal, sometimes on paper, gives you that like nails on chalkboard feeling, but depends on the angle you're holding it and the pressure you put on it, right? Now, with that done, I'm gonna use my finger because the blenders that we used were great for those tiny shapes, not really ideal here. So I'm gonna use my finger and start doing mini circles and watch how that charcoal dust, which really is like a dust once you color it in, starts to soften, starts to fade, starts to blend. You can do circles. I'm really following the contour of the circle that I drew in order to render my moon. And as you can see, now we've got the shadows, it does get lighter, right? So you can always go back, and if there's a spot that's too light on your dark side of the moon, add more shadows to it, and then blend it out, and then you're filling it out, right? Now, like I said, I think my moon could use a little bit more mid-tone, so another trick I use is use the actual whole entire charcoal on its side, and this time maybe go two fingers, Apply a bit more pressure. And voila, we've just created the whole mid-tones of our moon. The shadows are still there. The mid-tones are now there, so it's not just flat anymore. And we know where our highlight's gonna be. It's gonna be right here. And it's okay if you've got these. If you've got charcoal fingers, peace to you, man. You look like an artist. So, using my eraser, I am going to lift some of the midtones and some of the charcoals that I have on this edge. This is an actual element where you're actually drawing with the eraser. Before we start adding the details, I'm just making sure that I have one section right here where 
I know it's going to be really bright. After this next step, you're really going to see this highlight. Our moon's hanging suspended by gravity in space, right? So let's make space. So before we go to the details part, I always like kind of filling in the picture. So we're going to take our charcoal. You're going to find the edges of your moon. And oh boy, this time you're going to push. You're going to push really hard because in order to make our moon pop, we want to show the darkness and the vastness of space, right? So take that charcoal stick and go all around your moon. Swallow up my arrow. Make sure you kind of get the border right to the edge. You can kind of turn the charcoal piece right to the edge. I'm coloring pretty fast here because as you know, I'm going to blend this, but I want the edges of my moon to stand out. So by adding this really dark charcoal behind it for space, we're really bumping up the contrast now. Okay, so by doing that, I'm gonna take one finger. Lightly, I'm going to blend all of this towards the edges. You know, maybe it's a little lighter on the edges, but this charcoal that you just kind of colored in, it is really a dust. And you're just spreading this dust around, right? You kind of fill the whole background, which is kind of what the goal was. You can use one finger, you can use two fingers. Trace the edges. Okay, there's our move. Now, if you get to the edges and you see that some parts aren't so clean, because it's again, hard to use your finger on the edges, you can always go back to our blender tool, who's great for really precise kind of shading and blending. I'm just softening those edges because I noticed that some of my charcoals weren't blended. So, and the charcoal is a dust. I want to remind you guys, when you're doing this, it's really easy to kind of want to smudge your hand across. Try not to do that because it does do something like this, where takes that dust and one puts you over your fingers, which makes it hard to work. So you want to keep your fingers, fingers are okay dirty, but the bottom of your, the bottom of your palm, if you get it dirty while you're working, you'll start smudging it everywhere. So you want to resist the urge to clean off the charcoal dust with your palm. Instead, use that eraser and clean it up after you blend. Cause you want to try to keep a clean surface as much as you can so you can do the next part. So the next part, I'm gonna use my charcoal pencil again. Let's add craters, okay? The moon is full of craters. We're gonna add some craters to the moon. It's part of the, it's a part of any art lesson that I love the most, which is the details. The devil is in the details, as they say, but for us, it's gonna be craters right now. And so we're gonna draw craters. And what craters are, if you really look at the moon, are supposedly they're leftover lakes from when the moon had water but we're gonna draw them as circles, right? There's a giant circle with more circles in them, but they're not always perfect circles, right? And sometimes they're not even complete circles. So I'm going to vary the size of my circles or my craters. I'm going to spread them out. I'm going to make them big, make them small, maybe make some of them right on the edge. Maybe some craters are not even craters, they're just little lines. The moon has lots of nooks and crannies, I would bet, and I'm assuming some of them we won't even see. Our dark side right here, you might not even see those craters, but I'm still putting them in there, just so there's a little bit of texture here. And on this bright side of the moon, you can really make a crater stand out because we had erased that section, and in order to lift that charcoal dust from before, now you've got an ideal surface to draw a couple of craters, Remember, the darker, the harder you push, the darker you can get that charcoal pencil to stand out. Another trick you can do is you can also shade in some of your craters, right? This crater kind of looks like he's living on the dark side of the moon, so I'm going to give him a little friend right here. So now my crater has a buddy, right? And I'm shading in parts 
not all, maybe some of them can be shaded in and all, right? Maybe this one right here, he's kind of a gray tone. I'm going to shade him a little bit and always go back and soften it, right? So if you don't like a crater, crater can just actually disappear. I'm going to create this crater right here and I'm going to blend him and look at him kind of just disappear into the background. So adding a little bit more of these craters, you guys can add as many as you want, right? You don't want to go overboard and make it kind of look like too much like Swiss cheese. You kind of want to make it look a little bit realistic. But like I said, you're the artist. You guys go for it. I'm adding these craters. I'm adding a little bit of lines on the edges. I'm going to actually take my charcoal pencil and kind of define my moon edge now a little bit more. Okay. And look at that. In just a few steps, we've created... Remember, it was just a bump? Well, it's still a bump, but it was a bump in a circle, and now we've got the moon. And what I actually think is another cool trick to do is with the eraser, you can actually color in some craters. You can actually lift off the charcoal, color in a circle, and actually do something like that where you've got this one crater that stands out a little bit. I'll do that one a little uh, one more again. I'm going to just take my eraser, color in the circle. <sighs> again, using my, using my air to blow it instead of using my palm. Pulling the circle, add a little bit of shadow, and now, now you've got a, you've got a, crater that stands out a little bit more. Now, for the bump down here, you can keep adding more details to your moon, really. You can spend some time, there's no rush to kind of get done with it. You can add tons and tons of craters, maybe lakes, formations, hey, you can even draw like Neil Armstrong's foot in the moon if you want to, right? But for the bump, the bump is kind of like a surface of a planet. So for this one, I'm just going to kind of keep it kind of simple because our focus is the moon. We want everyone to kind of look at this moon that we've done. So for this, I'm just going to try to draw a couple of like lines that kind of could resemble like terrain. I'm going to take my charcoal again. I'm going to sweep it across really lightly this time. And this time, instead of blending in a circle, I'm just going to go side to side. Side to side blending. Kind of softens all my lines. I'm going to take my charcoal pencil, redefine the top of my, my planet. And voila. We have just gone to the moon and back. So, you can add more details to your moon. You can add craters, like I said, to your heart's content, but play around with adding shadows, midtones, lights first, just like we did. And using that fundamental lesson, you can now create worlds. You can create anything. I'm going to share some images of some artwork done by my students of various charcoal, charcoal images, just to get you inspired. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. I love teaching it. This is a foundation lesson that can carry you into so many other areas of art. Charcoals are a building block and you can do so much with them. So thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and keep spreading the spark. So guys, I just wanted to go over what we used today for this lesson. Uh, so you can also use a stick of charcoal, but they have charcoal pencils that are kind of really nice because they're kind of refined and they're really great to have a point. Sometimes charcoal pencils, uh, char pieces of charcoal tend to break. That being said, a big chunk of charcoal is also a really good friend when it comes to doing that moon because the moon was so big and this kind of was really great for coloring in. The blenders, the blenders, they sell them in different sizes. These were fantastic for shading in and blending in those really tight spaces that we couldn't really reach with our chubby fingers, right? And like I said, the eraser, really cool for lifting off that charcoal and adding highlights really bright spots to our shapes. What's up everybody? My name is Sebastian Altat and I'm an artist. I'm doing this because I've had the most unbelievable good fortune to create a company that is founded on values, reaching other artists, connecting with children, building them up, inspiring, creating, and just having a good time. And I've 
I love what I do and I get to share. So I wanted to reach more kids and I wanted to put this kind of magical program that I've created, which is art, yoga, meditation onto a bigger platform. And so I wanted to make it accessible to anyone because art is for anyone and anyone can do this. And if I can just give you some tools and show you what to do and stand aside and let you create, that's what I want to do. That's my intention. We are coming to you from my home studio in Harlem. I have a studio in Pennsylvania as well, but this is my brainchild. This is my back cave. This is my fortress of solitude, if you will. But it is also surrounded by my art, by my desk, by my uh, design desk, my art easel, my big ideas table. And I thought what better place than an actual working studio to show you these lessons and these, these projects that I've come with to teach you different mediums, different ways to make art, different ways to look at art and just have fun. And if you happen to learn about a little art history along the way, then so be it. Oof. Favorite tool. I mean, and I gotta say, I'm, I'm, I grew up an illustrator, so I love pencils, but I love painting. So a paintbrush is my weapon of mass creation. I love watercolors. I love oil paints. Oil paints are, probably my favorite medium because they are so challenging, but uh, I love the, the the amount of versatility watercolors offer. I love details. I mean, the details of all aspects of art are my favorite painting. The detail section of any part of drawing and canvas or anything. The end is the cherry on the cake, as you put it sometimes, and that's my favorite part. But paintbrushes, that's, that's, my, that's my tool of choice. So I'm always rocking some kind of like art geek set with me at all times. So this is a pretty intense one. Um, it looks like a, like a, you know, like a nerd's pocket protector had like, like, uh, I don't know, like 15 kids. Um, but I've got pencils in here. I've got brushes, rulers, different types of shading pencils, different kind of outline pencils. Uh, I've got white out in here. I mean, I don't even think I've used that. I just, I'm, you never know uh, when I can use that. Uh, pencil sharpener, uh, various types of pens, but more often than not, it's just like a sketch pad and maybe something not as intense as this, but like a good pencil and a good pen. Like that's, that's really all you need, right? You don't need the whole setup all the time. Sometimes it's just a simple tool. Favorite artists, uh, there's so many of them. I mean, how do I even start? Picasso, I mean, I grew up loving art because of Batman. I am obsessed with uh, Tim Sale, Jim Lee. I drew Batman religiously, religiously. Todd McFarlane as a kid. Uh, and I was really drawing human anatomy. That's kind of what got me into art. And I always tell that story because it doesn't have to be like, I, I, I loved Cezanne and Still Lives when I was eight. No, I loved Batman and Joker and all the villains, right? And I loved comic books and these stories. And I would read these amazing stories and look at the art and just be blown away. And I just want to do that. And that was a big part of it for me. But as I grew older, I started to appreciate art history. I mean, from Albert Durecht, who uh, kind of was an English engraver back in the day and some of his detailed artwork to Caravaggio's paintings to Michelangelo and like the Renaissance artists. I mean, just mind blowing kind of art that I could only aspire to attain to, but learn from them and be inspired by them. So, and I'm always finding new artists, but there's so many that can inspire you that it's just like these artistic heroes that you can always choose from that can serve, inspire, and teach us. Because I think learning about art, art's history can definitely and always add to its future. This channel is also about becoming a perfect artist. It's about learning, it's about growing, not just as an artist, as a human being, right? If along the way you get frustrated, that's okay, that happens, that happens to everyone. There have been pieces that I've made that I don't like. I look back at them later and I'm like, okay, maybe it wasn't so bad, right? So be, be kind to yourself, have fun, and just go along for the ride, right? Because we're here to like enjoy and learn. And if you can do that and do things both simultaneously, then you'll be in great shape. I never thrown anything out. Like there might be an occasional piece of paper that you know the crumpled up and you throw it around and just like you're not having the right ideas. That may happen, but 
I've actually kept all my sketchbooks since I was a kid. So I'll look back and be like, oh my God, that Punisher that I drew, his head is tiny, but his arms are so big. What was I thinking? And you can laugh at it, right? You can learn from it, more importantly, but you can always just laugh at it. So by throwing it away, you don't get that way to look back on your work and be like, you know what? I've gotten pretty good at this one thing that I used to be bad at, right? So it's a great way to look back on your work and learn and see your progress, right? So save your sketchbooks. My God, I've saved, I've saved all of them. Save your paintings, you know? Find a place to put them somewhere. Maybe it's in your parents' house. Maybe it's somewhere under your bed, right? But save them and just, you'll be, you'll be thankful that you did. So every week when I'm showing you what the art lesson is, what the medium is, I always wanna share a little bit of myself in this process. I think uh, it's a human element in me that I wanna try to share a little bit of myself and why I'm doing this and connect with you and just share the power of art, right? So I really appreciate you coming by. I really appreciate you watching. I'm grateful for this opportunity. I hope you share it with others and always keep spreading that spark inside you. Peace.